you then. These are Elga shirts. It's Catherine and Jane. They're Yorkshire lasses. So, and they make lots of shirts and waistcoats. We make garments all based on historical styles. We use natural fabrics, a lot of them vintage, if we can find them. What we make is largely men's wear, but ladies wear them as well and can look really good in our stuff. We make stock sizes from an extra small through to an XXL. And then we make special orders for customers who are not standard themselves. Uh, we also make special orders for people who want something very specific. I'm Jane Elgar. I make the 18th century shirts and breeches as part of my sister's business, Elgar Shirts. We call this shirt the Na Napoleonic shirt. As you can see, it's got two buttons at the neck. It's got side neck gauze uh, and gathering at the sleeve head. It's a very good basic shirt for 18th, early 19th century wear. This is my loom state linen shirt. So it's a linen, so a fine linen, but it hasn't been, it's slightly unfinished. It's a nice, it's kind of a buttermilk shade. And I've made it extra long, which is more the, sh the length that shirts would have been. Here is my man shirt in moss green Irish linen. If I home in, you can see it's got four coconut shell buttons at the neck, which are quite subtle. It's got the, the usual neck gore and shoulder piece there. Here's my frill front shirt in Irish linen. If I turn it sideways, you can see it's got a nice profile. It's the detailing. It's got the little triangular gauze at the at the, each side of the collar and it's got the sh a shoulder strip and a bit of gathering on the sleeves. This is my simple linen shirt with ties at the neck and at the cuffs. I've actually used cotton tape on this shirt because I'd run out of linen string. This is the linen string I usually use. Uh, it's a very simple design with just triangular gauze at the neck, a bit of gathering at the sleeve head and gathering at the cuff. Um, and the idea was to produce, to make the simplest historical shirt for wearing where you don't really need it to show, you just need something to go under an outfit. To go with Jane's 18th century shirt, I make an 18th century style waistcoat. Um, and I'll show you on this one. This is made of cotton moleskin. It's double breasted, so you can wear the neck close to the top or, or open with a nice neck scarf or a frilly shirt. All our waistcoats have some adjustment at the back so that you can pull the waist in to give you a nice silhouette. That one is an olive green one. Um, then we do a black, which it's the same style exactly, but in black. This one has a uh, peacock feather lining. We then do um, a, a ladies version of the same. Now this style uh, is identical, but cut for ladies. So it's cut slightly shorter in the waist uh, with a bust dart. Um, again, you've got adjustment to give you a nice silhouette. Uh, the ladies waistcoats are made to order the men's we keep in stock. We then do a single breasted version of the 18th century style waistcoat. Uh, this one has uh, buttons that are held on by a ribbon at the back, which they would have done uh, in the 18th and 19th centuries when buttons were precious. Um, we do a further version uh, in, in, in what I call midnight blue, um, which is slightly less expensive because the buttons are less uh, complex to do. Uh, that one's lined in linen. We, you, we like to use linens uh, because that's what would have been used in the 18th century. This is a 
we call this our outband of a waistcoat which has a lace-up back with a little tongue underneath and um, uh, this is made of a wool cavalry twill and it's very warm to wear again that is lined in linen we sell neck scarves in the same linen as our shirts they're about one seven one meter 75 long by about 23 centimeters wide um, you can see all the colors here white that's a loom state linen that's a moss green that's um, a natural oatmeal color and black we usually have a natural linen too um, and here's one un unrolled uh, basically it's just a simple strip and you bring the style and the styling uh, but people use them for all sorts of things not just neckties i'm told these are my four front breeches in black corduroy with two big buttons at the front and two smaller ones at the waistband these are our fine cotton corduroy breeches with a full front it's good quality fabric that comes from Brisbane Moss in Yorkshire. These are long trousers in cotton calico. It's quite a substantial calico, almost like a canvas. It's the same shape as our breeches, but with a, an unfinished, with a long leg unfinished that's for wearing with boots. This is an Oxford cotton, so it's a robust cloth, um, not transparent at all. And this, this um, epitomises what we do. It is a collarless shirt that's designed with the buttonhole at the back and two buttonholes at the front to take uh, a detachable collar. Now this is a modern cloth. It is a, um, a, a cotton poplin. Uh, so it's very, very smooth, nice to wear. The same style, this has a split back yoke, which gives you a little more room on your shoulders. So those are cotton. We then do a linen. This is what I call a broken check uh, in Irish linen. Um, uh, linen is lovely to wear. It is more absorbent than cotton. It's not quite as smooth. This one has a, a spear point collar which shows better on the body than it does on the hanger. Um, this is a vintage cloth known as British khaki. It's a robust cloth um, and it, it is, the, the style of collar was what was worn in the 1930s and 40s. Uh, this is another vintage cloth that we're, we're using. Um, this is a gingham that will have been made in Manchester. Uh, they were, it's a very common cloth. Quite, again, like the, the uh, British khaki, it's quite a heavy uh, cloth, not like the sort of gingham you'd get in an Italian restaurant. This is uh, um, th this has a collar without any of the, the the stiffness in it. So this is a soft collar, um, and uh, it, this also bu buttons right through to the hem. We buy a lot of uh, linens from um, that come via from a mill in in Northern Ireland, and uh, this is a sample cloth where. The designers have had, had have had a bit of fun and we make up these cloths because uh, we find them fun and entertaining and they are absolutely beautiful cloths these to wear. These are the sort of shirt we sell a lot of. You can see this one has a horizontal stripe and that has a vertical stripe. They're, they've, they've all got the um, collar band designed to take a detachable collar short front opening and um, they're made uh, um, broad in the body and with plenty of room on the shoulder. We make a range of waistcoats based on styles that ran from the end of the 19th century through to the 1940s and that are still very wearable today. They are uh, slightly longer than would have been worn in those days when, when men wore their trousers much higher than they do today. Mm. Uh, we do some like these where the waistcoat and trousers are made to go together so you have a, 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 a simple outfit 
uh, all of the waistcoats are adjustable at the back so they're all designed um, to fit nicely to your shape um, the waistcoats have six front buttons and three working pockets some of them actually have four uh, the trousers if i show you the our our trousers are high in the waist they come up to the belly button or the navel um, they all have uh, uh, a shape at the back designed to take the braces the brace buttons are inside the trouser uh, rather than um, outside we can put them outside if you prefer all the back of the trousers has has a, a buckle that just covers the join at the center the trousers are made if i show you on this pair the trousers are made uh, so that they can be adjusted should your waistline change in size so that means your waist the wet back waist can be taken in or out to get a better fit having said that uh, high-waisted trousers should not be tight they should be loose enough you're not supporting them by a belt you're supporting them from your shoulders with the braces they all have a button fly uh, and they are relatively loose in the leg uh, we do different cloths that one is is a, a wool uh, the, the trouser that goes with the waistcoat is a soft wool marl um, we then have this fabric which is a wool silk mixture that feels lovely to wear the, the style is identical here we have a cavalry twill cavalry twill is a very heavy cloth it's the heaviest that we use uh, and it would have been worn um, uh, early 20th century for the cavalry. Uh, it has slight stretch to it, so it's good for horse riding. Um, uh, these are vintage cloths, cloths that won't be made today. Uh, we do this in various colours. Uh, I'll show you the other colour we have. Uh, I call that one mushroom, this colour stone and that one sand. So uh, we're now moving from the mushroom onto the stone. Uh, we then use cottons. Uh, cotton cloths uh, are, are the most serviceable of all because they will go in the washing machine uh, and um, will take a huge amount of hardware. So the style is the same uh, with a button fly, uh, all to be supported by braces. Uh, we do the khaki. Uh, a black and we now uh, are doing a blue. I started this business six years ago having had a previous business in the 1990s making country clothing. My first product was night shirts. We still make night shirts. I'm very fond of them. They're lovely to wear. You get an awful lot of wear out of a good night shirt, probably eight to ten years. Um, and you know, Everybody needs a nice nightshirt in their life. Uh, they're £60 and we use the best cloths we can find. I started making smocks about five years ago. The smocks are based on the garments worn by the Bloomsbury set at the beginning of the 20th century. And those in turn were uh, based on those worn by uh, artisan, craftsmen and fishermen. Um, and what we make is a simple, simply styled garment that is very comfortable to wear and it's great for anything.